له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. For Allah is the kingdom. He is the king. He is the creator. The one who sustains and provides. For whatever ما في السماوات whatever is in the samawat وما في الأرض and everything that is in the earth. So we have two alam. Two universes. We have Al Alam Al Ulwi and we have Al Alam Al Sufli. The Alam Al Ulwi is the upper universe where the angels and they live. And we have Al Alam Al Sufli, the uh, down and lower, uh, what do you call it, universe which is the earth that we are living in today which others live with us all of them they fall under Allah's kingdom subhanahu wa ta'ala lahu ma fi samawat wa ma fi al-ard it's for him man dha alladhi who is the one meaning man dha is a question but this question here is istifham it's a questioning which is in carry. Meaning there isn't. There is not. There is no one. So man dhaladhi, who is the one? Here is what? Is in a question form to get your attention. And that's the balagha in the Quran. It's called istifamu al inkari. It is to get your attention. It is to get your attention. You're being asked a question. And then you're told the answer is inside the question itself. The answer is in the question that is called eloquency. That the answer contains within the question. Man who is the one? Mean la ahada. The answer is already attached to it. Is la ahada? There's no one. Yashfa'uhu can intercede. عنده with him subhanahu wa ta'ala the word yashfa'u we have to know al-shafa'a shafa'a is rooted from a word mushtaq is rooted from the word what al-shafa'a al-shafa'a what is shafa'a shafa'a is the it's the opposite of Al-Witr. So Shafa means even. Whereas Witr means odd. odd. Where Witr means what? Or odd. Uh, it means odd. What does it mean? Witr means odd. So where did, where, what's the relationship with the word? Yashfa'u and evening. E e uh, odd even. How? How does it come? It's as though Fakanashafi'a. It is as though the one who's interceding Dhamma su'alahu ila su'ali gayrihi fayasiru shafa'an biduni an kana witran. Intercession means what? It is the reason why it's called the person is called a shafi' is because your request you've added it on behalf of somebody else's request and so it's become a it's become two and it's not just one person who's doing it for himself so that's simply a dua but here it means you've added your questioning to the questioning of somebody else so now it becomes two when it was only one. Because each one is one. But then when you came together. So that's why the person who's interceding is interceding for more than one person. And that is why the word shafa'a means su'ali al-khayri lil-ghayri. Su'ali. Su'alu al-khayr lil-ghayr. It is asking good for somebody else. 
And it means that a person asks a believer, he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yaghfira dhunuba wa jara'ima ba'dul mu'minina. That a believer asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the sins and the crimes of other believers. So Allah is asking us here, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ Who is the one who intercedes beside him, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ means what? أَيْ إِلَّا بِأَمْرِهِ Except with Allah's permission and command. And this shows us what? Allah's kibriya'i. Allah has kibr, which is his rights. And that is majestic, subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one has the right that, that no one has the right to come forward to intercede in his presence, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for any individual except with his permission, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the supreme. So I ask you now a question. If you are not able to intercede for somebody, if you are not, if you are not, when can you intercede? Pay attention. When can you intercede? When you've already received good right and you're a righteous person. Then and only then would you worry about somebody else, right? Pay attention to this fa'ida. If you can't go forward and speak before Allah allowing you to intercede for this person, even though you're good, then what makes what gives you the rights today in this world? When you don't know if you're good, and you have no knowledge of you being righteous or good, how dare do you go forward and speak and you speak before his commands? And not only go before him, but you actually oppose him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you oppose him, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ya'lamu, he knows. Ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows. Ma bayna aydihim, that which is before their hands. Meaning that's that which is before them. Meaning that's the future. Allah knows their future. Wa ma khalfahum, and Allah knows that which has happened in the past. He knows subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is ilmuhu wa tila'u. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's large knowledge, his great knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his tila' is muhitun bin umur al madiyati wal mustaqbala. Wallahi, one fa'idah I came across that came to my mind. In order for you to realize, this is a fa'idah, it's a very powerful benefit. In order for you to be just and be fair to a judgment that you have passed towards a person, you would have to, you would have to know matters relating to that person. In order for you to pass a fair and just rule, you would have to know the reality of that person you're judging the issue or the person you're judging the matter on. Sah? How is it that Allah's judgments don't mean anything to us when He knows everything more than we know about it other than ourselves? He knows it better than ourselves. He knows our ins and He knows our outs. He knows that which we have done. He knows that which we have, are going to do. He also knows that which we are doing right now. He also knows that which we haven't done. If we were to do it, how we would have done it. He knows it. So based on that, his judgments are going to be fair. His rulings, he passes, are going to be just and fair. Because he has knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's encompassed everything with knowledge. يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ He knows it. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ 
Again, still carrying on the benefit that I was saying before. So is Allah's judgment going to be fair? Is it? How is it? You who don't know him, you're passing judgments on him. You don't know Allah. The same thing that you claim that other people don't understand what I'm going through and they don't understand me. You are quick. You're quick to go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his commands and to say this is unfair. This is when you don't know who Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ You don't know. You don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his knowledge. وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah's kurs, Allah's kursi, what is it? Some scholars, they said, قِيلَ أَنَّهُ الْعَرْشِ it is Allah's Arsh. Qila is also said, Innahu Gayru. It's other than the Arsh. <coughs> it's also even been said, as Abdullah ibn Abbas is the one who said it. Ibn Abbas said, Al Kursi, the Kursi is Mawdu al Qadamain, the place Allah puts his foot. And he said, Wal Arshu la yakdir ahadun, Wal Arshu la yakdir ahadun kudrahu. And as for the Arsh, no one can perceive its, its Qadr. Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, because this statement of Imam Abbas, Imam Muhakim al-Darimi, rahimahullah, because Imam al-Darimi, he brought it in his Raddu ala Bishr al-Marisi, Ibn Khuzayma, Kitab al-Tawheed, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari in his Tafsir, al-Tabarani in his Kabir, al-Bayhaqi in Asma'i wa-Sifat, Khatib al-Baghdadi in his Tariq, and also in his Azaba, Daru ibn al-Asima, Kitab al-Sunnah, Abdullah ibn Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Abdullah ibn Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, also al-Imam al-Dhahbi in Muhtasar, al-Ulu al-Ali al-Ghafar, Shaykh al-Bani when he was working on that, he said the statement of Ibn Abbas is Isnaduhu mawqufun sahih. It is sahih as mawquf. It is sahih mawquf. Meaning it is authentically attributed to Ibn Abbas. Wasi'a kursiyuhu samawati wal ard. Wala yauduhu hifduhuma. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not hard on him. وَلَا يَؤُودُهُ It is not hard on him. حِفْظُهُمَا The safeguarding and the protecting of the alamu al-ulwi and the alamu al-sufli. The upper universe and the lower universe. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لِكَمَالِ قُدْرَةِ وَقُوَّتِهِ His complete strength and ability. وَهُوَ أَنْ Allah is Al-Ali. Ali here means what? Al-Ulu Al-Mutlaq. When we say Allah is Ali, it means Allah is high. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is high and is above his throne. As we say, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa. Allah wa ta'ala is above his throne. Also, because when we said al-ulu al-mutlaq, unrestricted ulu, the first one it happens to is ulu al that. That's the first type. Meaning Allah wa ta'ala, he thatiyan is above his throne, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it falls under ulu qadrin. Meaning Allah wa ta'ala has the complete characteristics and the complete attributes so his ulu, his qadr, is high. And the last one which is ulu qahrin, meaning Allah wa ta'ala has complete ability over all his creation. He's the one who, who uh, controls them and uh, runs their affairs. Al-Azimu. Al-Azimu means al-ladhi lahu jami'a sifat al-azamati. He has all of the great noble characteristics. 
Why did the Sheikh Rahimahullah use this ayah? And what was the shahid? What is he trying to use it for? Again, the Sheikh is trying to use it as what? That, أَنَّ اللَّهَ جَمَعَ فِيهَا Allah combined in this surah ayah بَيْنَ النَّفْي وَالْإِثْبَاتِ Between negation and what? Affirmation. And that this surah, it consists of إِثْبَاتِ الصِّفَاتِ الْكَبَالِ وَنَفْي النَّقْسِ عَنِ اللَّهِ Affirming complete characteristics for Allah and negating deficiency from him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what this ayah, surah ayah is consisted of. You see, and that is why Allah la ilaha illa huwa is nafyu al-ilahiyyati amma siwahu wa ithbatuha lahu. Allah la ilaha illa huwa. Negating ilahiyya, uluhiyya from everyone else except for him. Al-hayyu and al-qayyum is affirming hayat and qayyumiyya for him. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم is نفي السنة والنوم negating النعاس خفيف النوم and also sleep in itself له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض again is إثبات أفهم for him what الملكية 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 الكاملة that Allah تبارك وتعالى has complete kingdom of the two universes, the upper and the lower. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ Negating shafa'a from everyone else besides him. يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ Affirming complete knowledge for him, the knowledge of the past and the present. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءُ Affirming and clarifying that the creation are in need of him. And to affirm for him that he is rich and is not in need of his creation. وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Affirming for him, kursi. And also affirming for him, complete, noble, majestic characteristics. And the, how small the creation are in comparison to the what? The kursi. Because that's the greatest creation that there is. Also, وَلَا يَؤُوذُ وَلَا يَؤُوذُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا Negating weakness from him subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he doesn't get tired and in, uh, that he's not incapable negating that from him. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ أَفَهْمِ فَوْهِمْ الْعُلُوُ الْمُطْلَقُ The unrestricted ulu and al-azama strength and power and ability and that he's high and he's majestic subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is why the Sheikh brought the ayah, Allahu la ilaha illa wal hayyul qayyum. It has all of that in it. Then the author went on to say, وَلِهَذَا كَانَ مَنْ قَرَأَ هَذِهِ الْآيَ فِي لَيْلَةٍ لَمْ يَزَلْ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَافِظٌ وَلَا يَقْرَبُهُ شَيْطَانٌ حَتَّى يُصْبِحَ Anyone who recites this ayah in a night, he does not remain except protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and shaitan will not come close to that individual until the morning. And the Shaykh here is uh, he's pointing out the narration in Sahih al-Bukhari. He's pointing the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Uh, <coughs> in which Imam al-Bukhari, he brought a chapter called Babu Sifati Iblis wa Junooduh, Mu'allaqan. Uh, this narration, Bukhari narrated it. And Nasa'i rahimahullah, he brought it in uh, 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 the hadith Mawsul. In his book, Amal al Yawmi wal Layla, Al Ismailiya, and other than them, they brought it. As half of the Hajar mentions in his Fatul Bari. That the Prophet ﷺ said, Ida awaita ila firashika faqara ayat al kursi. If you go to your bed, then read ayat al kursi. Hatta takhtatima. Hatta takhtam. Until you finish the ayah, until you finish the ayah. فَإِنَّكَ لَنْ يَزَالَ عَلَيْكَ فَإِنَّكَ لَنْ يَزَالَ عَلَيْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَافِظٌ وَلَا يَقْرَبُكَ الشَّيْطَانُ حَتَّى تُصْبِحَ It will not remain except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected. And shaytan will not come close to you. Shaytan is referred to every hard-headed, arrogant individual who goes against Allah's command, whether he's from the jinn or from the ins, it doesn't matter. 
And the word shaitan comes from shatara. Ida ba'uda. The Arabs, they say shatana, meaning that thing went far. And the reason why they say far is because لِبُعُدِهِمْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ is far from the mercy of Allah. Or, is also from the word شَاطَ يَشِيطُ which is إِذَا اشْتَدَّ And you would find that in the Kitab النِّهَايَةُ فِي غَرِيبِ الْحَدِيثِ by Ibn Athir. Ibn Athir رحمه الله. I will stop there, b'ithni lai, for this chapter. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayhi.